Remember when I gave you this alpha just a few days ago? So there's 19,000 mints pending on this one I'm looking at. We'll probably be sold out tomorrow uh, by the time I wake up in the morning. You know, if we do high priority, it's $100. So it probably costs you as low as $100, as high as $200 to get that transaction through. And even with the floor being down 23% in the last 24 hours, the floor price is currently sitting around $465. It actually peaked above $800. So you are anywhere from four to eight X in profit. So congratulations. <laughs> on that. I talked about minting, buying, and selling in my last video, so don't come to the qu comments asking how to buy this stuff. Just go watch that last video. In this video, we're going to talk about the top five runes that are on my radar, that are on a lot of other people's radars, some of those that could hit $1 billion market caps or more, and just general what people are kind of looking at right now. I'm involved with a lot more runes than what I'm going to mention in this video. I'm just taking it down to five that I really like. A matter of fact, I don't even own all of these. These are just what I see being some of the early winners. With all that being said, not only is this, of course, not financial advice, I'm not saying to buy anything that I talk about. All of my videos are simply putting things out there for everybody to see, not just in these private alpha groups where it's only a select few people see it, but for everybody to see and make their own decisions. I'm not saying buy any of the assets or any of the crypto mentioned in this video. Runes particularly are very speculative. I mean, runes literally just became a thing at the first block of the Bitcoin halving, which was just a few days ago. There's already not a lot of marketplace adoption yet. I mean, Magic Eden is soon to launch runes. You can see that in this decrypt article that I'm actually showing on the screen, which I could also be a bull case for a lot of runes. This article is written on Decrypt Media by Erica Lee about the launch of Magic Eden runes. We, of course, are taking a massive risk here. Are these runes not going to be adopted and they're just not a thing after a few months? Or are they going to even surpass some of the tokens that we see on Ethereum and Solana? Only time will tell that nobody has a crystal ball. Okay, so you understand it's risky. You understand I'm not saying to buy anything in this video. Let's just take a look now. The top five runes that I'm currently looking at in no specific order. We have to start off with, of course, Satoshi Nakamoto. So one of the things I like to do for this, while market cap doesn't determine any everything, you can combine the circulating supply, which with this one is 20,999,700, with the price of the each individual token, which is $4.62, coming out to be just around a $90 million market cap. And you can, of course, compare that market cap with other cryptocurrencies that are comparable. So at the high, this was actually around like $140 million market cap, which is dipped back down to 90. This is pretty beneficial right now, especially being we don't have charts or anything else to really track the data of all these, but just definitely just something to take into consideration, especially when trying to compare one rune to another. So very quickly, there are some pros and cons to Satoshi Nakamoto. I'll start off with the cons. They had 20% of the supply pre-mined. This is usually a red flag, meaning that at any given point, could this number one address that pre-mined that basically already had it before they distributed it, before they allowed people to mint it, could they dump? Well, my argument would be is they haven't yet. And there's also another argument on top of that that I'd like to look at right here. So these are the top 10 runes. Some will argue that these provenance alone will make them valuable. I'm gonna talk about a few of them in this video, but I wanna take a look at first is the Satoshi Nakamoto. It actually was etched on number six. They paid around $62,000 just to be able to etch it. And word on the street is that the same people that etched Satoshi Nakamoto also etched a couple of other runes. So it's very likely that if you're going to pay $62,000, they have the money to where they're not carrying to rug. And it's already being adopted around crypto Twitter and a lot of other places. Uh, again, definitely something I don't want to just say, oh, this looks nice 20% and not really know that. But so far, so good. We'll see how it carries out. Just a heads up, this next one is absolutely wild. I don't know what it can do. And there are a few red flags. It's called Wanko Manko. This is one of the most interesting and unique coins that I've seen on this one already pending a gate IO listing, which by the way, Satoshi Nakamoto also has one is based off of furry lore written by none other, the founder of runes himself, Casey Rod Arbor. You can see he's been in full support of this token since they launched, which has definitely helped the hype and attention around it. Uh, and this is a part of a podcast of him even talking about some type of runes like this that he would like. Uh, cosplay rune? Yeah, but what kind of cosplay? Um, like a furry rune? Yeah, furry rune. Yeah, Hunter's going to love that. <laughs> I want a furry rune. Uh -huh. So Casey absolutely loved this meme. It's very interesting. Like I said, probably one of the darker parts or the edgier parts of memes that I've seen around. It should go without saying, but I don't morally or ethically agree with some of the things around this token. I'm just talking about what has hype and attention and can continue to have that. I don't think everyone that adopts the token even needs to know the base of what it's about. They'll probably just see a funny ticker that's doing well and maybe 
even just trade based off of technical analysis. It's currently sitting around a $39 million market cap and your boy owns none. Now, one of the things, one of the problems around runes and BRC20s, here's a quick little side note is you have to buy currently in these like packets. So basically, instead of being able to sell one of these Wanko Mankos for 50 cents, so instead of trying to buy these for 62 cents a pop, and yes, these went up 10 cents since I started recording this video, uh, you have to buy in these packets. Now, so there, some of the packets are smaller. I saw some as small as like $60. Right now, the packets are pretty sizable with the lowest entry being a thousand. Uh, so $700 just to be able to get one of the smaller packets. This is definitely a barrier to entry for runes that hopefully we get past. My next pick would of course be rune token. I talked about this pretty extensively in my last video, but you were able to farm rune token using your Rsig miner. This is one of the leaders in this space as far as the pre-mining before runes were even a thing. And they're currently coming in at a $315 million market cap, trending number one in volume for the last 24 hours. And honestly, some of the biggest players in this space like UD really just bullish about rune uh, rune coin particularly just with the leading edge the amount of adoption and the amount of attention that they have this could definitely be if rune stone if runes do take off uh, rune coin can definitely lead the way in being one of those billion multi-billion dollar market caps they're already trucking their way to some of the biggest partners and ships in the space like meme land uh, sweeping r6 but also integrating them in their own activations so definitely rune coin is something to keep on your radar probably one of the quote safe plays as far as all this highly speculative uh, stuff goes just because it's so established and currently has so much attention going back to this beautiful chart we looked at earlier at the top 10 runes we got to take a look at number two who paid five hundred and ten thousand dollars for the number two rune called decentralized it was none other than cyber kongs if you're not familiar with cyber kongs they were a very successful ethereum project multiple hundreds of ethereum for their floor price they've already launched tokens like banana that did extremely well and now they're coming into the ordinals provenance space etching rune number two for half a million dollars now in order to get exposure to this uh, i can't calculate the market cap at the moment because it actually has not been airdropped it's going to be airdropped to their holders uh, of their prometheans mint so the prometheans was a free airdrop currently trading at 0.06 btc sitting around four thousand dollars and while it hasn't officially been announced at least that i've seen i do believe it's going to be a fair drop to all Promethean holders, but that's a little bit too speculative for me to be confident on. So just going to wait around and see how they distribute it. But I definitely see this being one of the competitors if runes continue to take off and to be a thing and to be relevant in the upcoming months with Prometheans being etched number two, Cyber Kong's attention they already have in the space. I think that this is definitely one to keep on your radar when they drop their token. Last but not least, we're going to look at the number three on the runes etched coming in at spending $185,000 just to get that number three spot dog to the moon so dog to the moon was an airdrop a free airdrop to runestone holders it has not been dropped yet and as you could tell if you're watching the market that's the reason that runestones went from 0.07 all the way down to 0.032 because the snapshot was taken yesterday every single person that was holding a runestone at the time of the snapshot is going to receive this dog token each holder is going to get around 889,000 tokens currently being traded at at 0.005 around $4,500. So fun fact, if you would have just simply held the rune stone, uh, the free ordinal that was airdropped to everybody who was holding a certain amount of ordinals before a certain date, uh, you would still be in the profit compared to selling at the top. So currently, again, the floor price is 0.03. People sold at like 0.07, 0 0.08. 0 still, the airdrop is trading above what that sell price would have been. And we'll see what it does post-market as it's currently just trading pre-market. And it's kind of hard to have this as an official indicator as Tyler says some recent tokens have an opening around 60 70 percent lower than wells pre-market trading levels so we really just don't know until it's dropped if i left one of your favorite tickers out drop it down below if you made it this far in the video if you like these videos and want to see more definitely give it a like give it a share give it a subscribe follow all those youtube twitter things and i'll see you guys next video